topic with controversy and WA Netweaver Administrator here. So here we have we went to the operations. We discussed about the how to stop the how to stop and start the our uh, SAP services from Java services from here as well. From here as well, how to do that one our services applications and everything here and also here uh, users and access databases jobs. So all those things we discussed right. Java scheduler here. It's kind of same as some 36. We have the Java scheduler here. So databases, it's not required. So the session management, how many sessions are opened, all the information will be so license management, system measurement, license. So here also we can import the license here. In the SAP, yes, license is the transaction code here. There we can import it from Java level. And we can use this one also here, right? So next in configuration tab. So authentication and single sign-on. So we can also configure the single sign-on configuration here. Single sign-on configuration. Few companies, they will go for the single sign-on configuration. Just now I explained to the other, other batch students in the BTP side how to configure the single sign-on. So same way here also in the Java side also we can configure the single sign-on SP Nego configuration for the, so Java side we can use the single sign-on configuration here. This one we can configure it here in the, so in the system here. Right, so this one we can configure it from here. So we have to generate and we have to configure from here. So this is a single sign-on configuration. For Java, only less people, they will use the single sign-on configuration here. So then identity management here, identity management. Identity management means, so here user IDs, and password creation, Java user ID and password creation. Suppose you want to create the new user in the Java side, click on the new user, just create the one user here. Suppose like Ravi user I am creating here. Just set the initial password or you want to generate the initial password, just set the initial password, just to provide the, the password here. Right? So if you want to upload the photo, just you can upload the photo of the so Ravi user, then last name, you can provide it like here, anything, just click on the, so account information, validity end dates, contact information. So all those things, we have to mandatory things, we have to provide it here. The what roles you are going to assign it here is the administrator role, right? Just we can create the administrator, administrator role, just we can assign the administrator here, right? Just added the administrator role. So just click on the save button here, then the user is created here. User already exists, Ravi user already exists here. Then what I can do here, maybe I can go with the, right, user is created, user is created. Now Ravi user is created. See here, Ravi12 user is created now here. So if this is created in the, I used the Okta side, so sorry, I used the SAP, SAP user. So same user I am using here. I am using here identity provider, ABAP identity provider here. ABAP, ABAP means our ABAP system. So normally backend we have the ABAP system. That system identity provider I am using here. So it means whatever the users we have in the here, same users should be available in here also. So means the ABAP ID. So you have the users in the, ECC SU01, so same user should be available here. So here I have created the Ravi12, now here also same user is available, right? 27, today only, right? Same user I created here. Same roles, role is, so administrator role I have assigned here. Administrator role I have assigned here, but it's not displayed, just user is created here, right? So here also you can manage the users. Java roles, we can manage it here. So if you directly can go to the, uh, SU01 of the your SAP system or in the end up here you can just go to the here also you can create the users here. Here also you can create the users here. So suppose how to integrate, how to integrate your SAP systems into your backend, so your Java systems into the Java systems to use the above users. Here there is a RFC destinations here. In the destinations tab, the destinations tab, we have to create the one RFC destination is called the 
you have me back in the connection destination we have to create it here so in, the, in sap in sm59 how can we create how to create the users how, how we are creating the so destinations right sm59 sap level but java is not the transaction code based concept but java side also there is a so author authentication concept right so here what we have to do we need the even me back end connection just click on the go to the go to edit mode or click on the create we can create the rfc destinations in sap level in sm59 when you click on the create button you will get the destination type is called the so above destination external destination tcp ip destination internal destination here also you can see http destination rfc destination gateway destination imdb destination the types of destinations are so back end is the above system then rfc destination so you back end as the http destination then you can give the destination name is suppose like http destination suppose like some google destination you can create it here then the url you have to provide then just provide the urls maybe i can create the same destination authentication methods maybe you want to use the basic authentication right so one authentication i have created just click on the okay button then it's connected successfully connected to the http destination right it's connected so like that we have to create the destinations so if suppose if you want to connect to the back end one of the system then suppose like you want to connect to the ecd system then connect to the ecd system then rfc destination go to the here then here you need to type the target system sap windows 1 your instance number is 30 for S ecd ecd destination i'm connecting to the ecd here 30 instance number 30 sid is the ecd then click on the ok button then technical user language client is the 100 then basis user then the password finish right ecd right successfully connected to the ecd system so this is the destinations creation destinations creation here how to create the destinations from java to above java to above so from above to java also we know right in sm59 from above system side so go to the here that is the external server right just select it then go to the here then here njd from java so from java like that we have given target host sap windows 1 then instance number 40 this is the 40 the prefix what we want to connect it here which url prefix so here what is the url you want to connect startup page so then just you can use the startup page or just leave it then http connection may not secure then you can use the user id and the password so what is the user so suppose like same basis user then password right then click on the connection test then it will test it it will connection test is successful it will test it here so here the wrong details i have given service number means five instance number zero zero that is the one we have to give it here right connection test now it's successful 200 okay test is successful means we are able to connect from sap to sap above to java java to above so why we are creating the connections means suppose the java need some some data from the above the time it will use the this connection if you set this connection then it will use it if you use a different connection it will use the different connections here like that we can create the n number of connections we can create it here like this so we have created the multiple connections here right so this is the destinations creation here this is the destinations creation so identity management user creation how to create the java users means in the identity management we have to create it here 
so then certificates and keys certificates and keys this is the very important here the java certificates and keys are very important for above if you go to the yes trust transaction code yes trust so there we have the certificates system psc ssl server standard client and these are the system certificates we have here in the above side here right for the java we have the certificates and keys certificates and keys here for the certificates system certificates or external certificates we want to import the external certificates or system so those certificates we have to import here right so suppose ssl certificates so some ticket by keystone some java mail icm certificates seed certificate there is a respective folder is there we have to import that respective system certificates into the here in the list we have to import it here right so each one there is a validity end date and validity will be expired so we have to upload how to renewal the how to import the certificates into the java system means in the nwa the netweaver administration page we have to go to the in the netweaver administration page so we have to go to the so certificates and keys so the select the folder in which folder you have the certificates are expired then click on the import just click on the import the certificates here then the certificates will be imported from here the certificates will be imported here suppose like i want to import the ecd certificate then import the ecd something like that you can choose it so then import it the certificate will be imported see here ecd certificates 2038 up to it is valid 2038 suppose you want to import the ecp the sap certificate then you can import the certificates so like that so we can import the certificates we can import the certificates here so why because certificates are very important here for the iss for configuration for the single sign on configuration or some other configuration the trust the certificate trust configuration is very important here suppose your system your sap system is trying to pull the bank data then your system certificate should be uploaded into the banking server then suppose you are sending the data to the bank server then bank server certificate you have to import into the so your system otherwise so systems will be rejected means your connections will be rejected here suppose if you open the any site suppose if you open the any site here any site there is a security standard right there is a security certificates one certificate is there security certificate this is the security certificate this security certificate we have to import into the our site our site also we can import means suppose you are sending the some data to the some icici banking or some other sites or google you are trying to send it then the google certificates we have to import into the our sap site sap java site. then only it will trust then only it will trust into the systems here then only it will trust it here right see here google certificate i have imported here right i have imported here so this is going to be expired in the 12th feb 2024 it is going to expire so the next three months it is going to expire so that is the reason it's uh, saying that it's valid it two days this year the status is the so it's a amber status here in the next three months right so now it is authenticated now it will be authenticated so now you can send the any data to your google google also will send the any data to our system here like that so anything we can send the data from date and to date so from certificate and to certificates here so your system certificate is there then your system your organization system will trust that certificate okay we are sending the data to the star.google.com so it will trust it then it will send the data to that system if you don't have certificate what will happen then uh, so it will reject it the connections will be rejected here the connections will be rejected so you will get the connection time out error something like that here so that is the main thing here certificate based authentication is very important sometimes here so how to import the certificates into the systems means we have to go to the certificates nwa we have to go to the certificates and keys we have to import it
and also suppose within the system internal system so to maintain the sso purpose we have to import the those certificates also those certificates system certificate like the back end abap system certificates and java system certificates in the organization suppose like example i will give you the example here so in the organization you have the one abap system one java system so suppose like we have the different different systems are there here right so so this system this system should so normally server means it should be get the data to and fro and also it will pull the data from here and it will give the response here it will give the response from here it will get the certificates all the data will be populated between the servers here then while the data is data is flowing always always you should not you should not uh, ask uh, well, because system to system communication right whenever user logging to the systems that time it will ask the user id and password but this is the system to system communication system to system communications in be that time what we have to do this system certificate we have to add to the above uh, java the system this system certificate we have to add to the here so both the side the mutual handshake should happen then all then it will not ask the any user id and password while system to system communication purpose here so in this case what we have to do we have to go to the so here trusted systems in the nwa the trusted systems so that so we have to add that system that ecd or whatever the system you are so we have to add it to the here which system you want to trust it so then so you have to add that system here above system so go to the add the system upload the certificate manually then select the certificate what system certificate about the ecd system certificate ecd then the under the client data you want to add it manually then just to finish it then you see that uh, ecd hundred client certificate you have added to the here it's okay so now any data which is coming from ecd to your java system java to ecd that is the sso that is the sso pure sso configuration here means it will trust it will trust it then it will ask it will not ask any user id and password so automatically it will pull the data from the your back your front end ecd your above system why when the certificate is active here then it will be single sign on with the certificates here that is the single sign on with the certificates here so those certificates whenever you adding here those certificates will, will be added to the in this list here in this list here it will be added here so here it is added ecp ecd certificates are added to the here so certificate renewals are certificate uploads we have to do it in the from here we have to do it from here so we can also export all the certificates into the psc's one file also we can export it here we can also import from the file so if you want to manually import the certificate just to click on the import entry or click on the export entry that will be imported and that will be exported here right import entry and export entry here okay so that is the certificates here <coughs> okay certificates and keys destinations and trusted systems and identity management so this these things are very important here so trusted systems and everything ssl ssl configuration means pure https configuration here here we are using the http configuration so http configuration if you want to use the https then we need to go to the https configuration so then here we have to generate the https port number means https we pure ssl ssl certificates so it, it means you will get the set urls like this here it will get the lock symbol here if you open your server certificate server any url from your backend systems it will open the it will be trusted one this is a trusted one the connection is secure so 
no hackers no one will hack your systems here no one will hack your systems here so ransom no one hack your system if it is not trusted one then you will get the it's saying that your connection is not secure so hackers definitely they will hack your systems so that's why we need to for SSO config from HTTP configuration, we have to do the this configuration here. HTTP yes configuration we have to perform it here. Okay, so that is the main thing here. SSL configuration, so SSL endpoints, trusted systems. So these are all the these are not required. These are the very important certificates, destinations creation. Normally we used to daily certificates and keys certificates imports mainly destinations creations to the systems trusted systems user ids creations all these are the important concept here right all these are the very important here infrastructure side ads configurations application destinations will come same licenses java licenses so license by default it will be only the temporary license you will get it out here temporary license is it valid only 5th March, 5th March here, right? This January, February, March, three months, three months license period here. And above, we can go to the S-Trust, sorry, S-License transaction code. There, we can import the certificates, right? For Java systems, we have to use the, for Java systems, we have to use this one. So we can import the certificates here, right? Java systems, hardware, key, everything, we can import to the here. This is the main thing here. Right, so the message server configurations here. So that is the different SLD data supplier configuration. SLD data supplier means in the Java, we have one more functionality like SLD, system landscape directory here, SLD, system landscape directory here. So system landscape directory means all your systems can so report to the with populate to the one common directory that is called the SLD. All your systems, all your systems, SAP systems or Java systems or third party systems, we can maintain in the in your company, you can maintain in the one common directory that is called the system landscape directory. We can maintain it here, SLD. Right. So here SLD is the one of the functionality. It's required the some landscape data means your your landscape data your landscape data will be imported into here in the sld sld here either above systems or java systems or third party systems everything will be reported to the your sld why because for solution manager or for po systems it's required some data from the your business system so all systems will update your host names, IP address, all the details into the your SLD systems here. Here you can see our ECD system also reporting to the here. ECD system also reporting and NJD system also reporting to the here. So what we have to do here, so for Java systems, we have to configure the data suppliers. SLD data supplier, we have to configure it here. So SLD means pushing the data to the your data supplier here. Just click on the collect and send data, then it will send the data to the here. To get this one, get one, you need to create the one destination here. Go to the destinations. Here, data supplier destination, we have to create it here. Data supplier destination, we have to create it here. Data supplier destination. So we have to create it here. So then uh, SLD client, these destinations we have to require to send the data to the backend SLD client and SLD data supplier, two destinations are required here. Then, so suppose if above system wants to report, then above side, go to the RZ70, then push the data to the our SLD, registration in the SLD here. Just click on the push button, then your system will be reported to the your backend, your SLD system. Sir, what are the contents we have to feed in that sir? SLD system means we are it's pre-built or we have to build, sir. No, it will be uh 
there it was written there, sir, when you were just showing the screen, Java screen, sir. Here we have to build. Where? Here, what you're doing, sir, we have to build here. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the, suppose if we want to push the data to the above system, sorry, JSLD, then go to the RZ70. Just here we have to provide the your Java system details. Your Java system details, you have to provide it here. What is your Java system? So that Java system details you have to give it. Just click on the push the data. So that will be pushed to the the data will be pushing to the your system here. The data is pushing to the your system. Data is pushing. So means your landscape, what data means, what data means your system data, like what are the components you have, what is the version, how many clients you have, all the information, it will be pushed to the your SLD system. You can see it here, all the information will be pushed to the here. Suppose if you take the ECD, ECD, what is the so database and how many clients you have in the ECD, then what is the message server details and application server details, then so all the installed software details here, all the details are available in this in this case here. All the details are available here. What are the installed mm -hmm. software components? All the information will be available here. So this data is required by some other system. So some other systems will take the data from the SLD. So that's why we have to push the data here. We have to push the data from the SLD. SLD is the one of the functionality in the Java systems. Just type the SLD after the URL. If you type the SLD, then SLD will be opened here. Right? Here in the SLD, we have the business technical systems. Technical systems, all your systems here. Then so details. Details means oh, what is SLD is running or not. So SLD version. Yeah. So all the information here, it will be available here. Like data suppliers. Who, who data supplier means who will supplying the data to the here that is the main thing the server here all the details will be displayed here data suppliers export import the data sim content cr content synchronizations suppose we have the one more sld we can sync the data from the other sld's also here that is also possible here then so yeah, apart from sir ECD system or the uh, SAP system, we can go external also. Yeah, some other other systems also we can add it to the go to the technical systems. Then you can see the above systems we can add it. Java systems we can add it. Some other computer systems you can add it. PI systems you can add it. Some other standalone systems you can add it. Uh, your uh, Dana databases you can add it. And third party mm -hmm. systems you can add it. Whatever you want. So. You can add those systems also here. So either third party, third party systems. What is the third party system name and host name? So all those things also we can add it. Manually add it or manually adding means so it will take time. Then go to the SAP level. If it is SAP, then RZ70 we can push the data. SAP RZ70 we can push the data here. So if it is SAP in RZ70 we can push the data here. If it's not the SAP then it's not the SAP then here. Then we have to go to the here. So if it's SAP RZ70, just click on the push the data. The data will be pushed here. See here, RFC call is successful now. Now mm -hmm. ECD, D, right? So now just click on the refresh button. So we have the two above systems, ECD, yes. right? ECP, sorry, ECP, ECP, ECP. ECP came to the here, right? Within a fraction of seconds, you got the data here. How many clients you have? So then what are the installed software components you have? So all the information you will read will be reported to the here. All the information. What is the version of the comp? All the information you got here, all the systems information you got it here. So here you need to provide the gateway details and everything here. Then just click on the push. Then it will send the data to the your SLD. It will send the data to the your SLD here. Sir, in, sir, in real time system, uh, where it is used, sir? In the real time, so in the PI, PO, interface levels, some other solution manager, managed system configuration level, so that will be used. Okay, okay? that will be, that will, that require the, your uh, SLD data. So that's why that will be used in most systems. That's why you need to have the one SLD. It's a small functionality. We have to enable it, enable it in the SLD side here, in the Java side. 
So SLD will be open. All the systems will report to the here. So now we have the three systems entered, three systems, previously two systems. It will show you when was the last update date and everything here. So here for ECD, the last update is the 18th. Then after that, it's not updating daily. So then go to the ECD. Let's see why it is not updating. Object 70. Your details are wrong here. 41. Just click on the OK button. Then successful. Now see here 18. Just refresh. Just refresh. Then it will be changed. You see? It changes. Now. Yeah. So it's up to date. So always the data will be up to date here. You no need to manually. One time, one time you have to perform it dial every time so it will be automatically it will be updated to the in this screen here so it is the what is the version here all the information will be shown here so if you have the hundreds of systems hundreds of systems data will show here so all systems in the one screen here so this system's data is required by the other other systems so that's why we need the sld system landscape directory all the systems technical details will be reported in the sld screen here Okay, that is mm -hmm. the main thing of the SLD configuration here, SLD. So this SLD from Java to Java, third party to SLD, then Java to uh, above to SLD, all the systems. SLD is only work on the Java system. That's why for Java will provide the, this SLD functionalities. This Java will provide the SLD functionalities here. So like licenses, that's why data supplier configuration. Above RJ70, Java, here we have to put the data here. So that is Java system properties means parameter changes. The Java level, if you want to do the any specific service level, services, some threads you want to change it, application threads, some services, anything you want to change, some memory parameters, anything you want to change it here, you have to come to the here high level. So you have to come to the here. So then here also you can change the all the configurations. Some modifications we can perform it from here as well. Suppose you want to increase the some threads, some pool size you want to increase 60 to 70, some thread count you want to increase the 40 to 50. Then in this case, you have to come to the here, then go to the modify stage. Then instead of 60, just make it the 70, just click on the set button. Right? So, like this, we can change the value here, custom value here. Mm -hmm. So, param any configuration changes with HANA in the INA files, how we are changing. For above, RJ10, RJ11, how you are changing the, for Java, some properties, we have to change it from here. Some properties, we have to change it here. Some properties, we have to change it from here. That is the, so Java application, of here Java properties here. Any properties here, we have to change it here. So, uh, this one is not required, this one is not required. Application models, these all are the not required. So log configuration is very important here. So log configuration, so logs, trace level settings here, trace level settings here. So sometimes we may have to set the trace. So we need have to increase the trace. Here it is giving only information. Sometimes uh, when you are working with the SAP, some performance issues we have. So SAP said the logs are not enough. Please provide the debug information or please provide the error only. Please provide the all the information. That time we need to set the trace levels. Means it will generate, it will collect the, the more logs. It will collect the more logs from the systems here. It will collect the more logs from the systems here. That is the trace configuration here. So if you want to set any trace configuration, here we have to set the trace configuration. Okay, the log configuration side it will collect the more logs by default. It will collect the more logs here. System information, you know, yesterday we have seen trusted systems, the list of systems which are trusted. So, those are things here. Configuration wizard, suppose, yeah, in the configuration scenarios, in the configuration wizard, it will it will show the suppose you want to if you want to configure the some PA. 
so initially uh, whenever you install the system by default it won't configure the all the functionalities here we want to activate the some other pi functionalities then just do the pi setup here if you want to bi initial setup you can use the bi setup here so then we have to configure this functionalities in the system here suppose you want to adapter engine so md ro ads so any other functionalities you want to additionally enable it so you can you have to perform the this configuration here you have to perform the this configuration here initial setup for this configuration we have to use it in the system here so that is the function in configuration wizard configuration wizard additional functionalities suppose if you want to do the any additional functionalities you can configure destinations normally we know rfc destinations the tabs will be repeated multiple tabs here jeco rfc provider jeco connections so it's kind of tcp ip program id connections here jeco connections here jeco connections here so jeco rfc provider for above system to java request dispatch the calls applications and everything jeco connections are required here jeco server jeco connections that time we will go to the jeco provider we will just click on the create provide the program id so then provide the gateway host all the information we have to fill it get jeco means above to java java to above jeco connections here so then what we have here yeah i think here this is the one then troubleshooting so the troubleshooting side locks we know performance statistics we know system information we know distributed transactions we know this one is not required it's kind of troubleshooting perspective if you want to check the any open sql any sql statements here cluster nodes sql statements trace on trace off trace related things here traces anything you want to navigate here so locks and traces are very important here here lock configuration is fine but after the configuration checking the locks are very important here in the log viewer we can check the configuration here the log viewer we can check the configuration here here the logs are not showing due to some connection issue so it's not showing there is a, a parameter we have to change it that will i will show you later log is for the we can trace the user address right 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 so and lock is the user uh, user lock lock l o c k lock user, is user, for the uh, lock and trace yeah so currently we are yeah. Uh, yeah currently we are using so our lock entries are exist here so at the same time one more person also trying to edit it so then there is a lock entry will be displayed it will show oh already other person is doing the work you cannot do similar kind of work something like that it will show the information if anything locks also we can unlock it you know uh, if any person able not able to access it means we can able, uh, we can make it able to access that is the different actually that is the su01 locking su01 uh, here lock locked user is locked due to un invalid attempts or wrong password this lock entry is the different this lock entry is the java lock entry is the different here sm12 sm12 what we can see suppose sap sap thing is same time multiple people multiple people cannot edit the same thing right same time multiple people cannot do the anything same that's why we have the lock entry so it will lock the your system so means your transactions it will lock it until you complete suppose you are booking the ticket one more person also trying to book the same ticket so then it will lock it first person should book it out then once you cancel the ticket then it is available for you until then it will lock it so then but user is user lock is different user is locked due to invalid password is when that is a different different issue here those things we cannot track it here lock means just only lock entries so either, particular any website yeah I... suppose in the system i am trying to create something here i am trying to create the something here then you are also doing the similar things here that only that is display to you and so suppose here what i am doing here i will go to the user management i am trying to create the user here right i am trying to create the user 
then one more person also trying to create the user then when i'm trying to save it so i'm also creating the same user you are also creating the same user then it will lock it it will say like already the other people other person is creating something like that it will show it will be locked by the some other user something like that it will show the information nabop level sm12 how we can find out nabop sm12 we'll go to the sm12 so here we can see the lock entries right so when you are trying to edit it suppose like i'm going to the smlg just click on the create button at the same time when i am going to the some other same transaction code so this is the ecp oh this is the ecd let's take new jui so i am trying to create the one logon group here i am also you are also going to create the same logon group it will show like oh this is locked by the this way this user already so only display is possible to you you cannot do anything here only display is possible here so that information is showing here that information is showing here so that is the one so this is the user management java support pack jsp and the rest of the job is there and yeah 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 we have the session uh, yeah So yep. lock configuration, lock configuration. That is the configuring the more locks. That is the configuring the more locks. So existing locks are not enough. So then we can collect the tracing here. We can collect the traces. We can enable that one. It will collect it here. So advanced troubleshooting means some dump analysis, some other dumps. If any lock in Java, most of the time we will get the out of memory dump. Java also is like a memory minded here. If any memory issues in the Java, so it will generate the one out of memory dumps, OEM dumps here. So here, those dumps also we can analyze it from here. Those dumps we can analyze it from here. We can analyze it from here. So that so it will clearly it will tell you what is the error exactly. So why this dump got error? All the information it will show here in this case here. So that is the so Java Java. So uh, the troubleshooting side we have this logs and traces. So this is the, the troubleshooting is for the logs, traces, issues finding and everything here, right? Configuration tab is here. So certificates, destinations, certificates, destinations means same as like SM fifteen and RFC destination. Certificates means our SA SAP certificates, certificates related folder here. So trusted systems, trusted systems means. The systems which are trusted for the SSO for accepting the connections and everything, those system certificates we have to import it to the here. The systems who which are imported to the here, so it will be trusted. Other than this, anything which is which is coming to the inside of your system that will be rejected here. It will ask the user ID and password. So which are there in here, those will be trusted here. Identity management means user management here. User creation. If the user is locked, we can unlock it. If you want to delete, we can delete it. If you want to generate the password, we can generate the password. So we can, we can do that one. That is the identity management password here, right? So here ADS is the separate ADS is the ADS configuration we have to perform it here for the Adobe services for Java. For Java side, so from documentation functionalities, from PDF functionalities, we have ADS services. We have to configure it here. So destinations, you know, not all very important here. Licenses, SLD data supplier, so system properties to changing the system properties and anything here. So trusted systems, system information, log configurations. So. Only few, few are very important here. Not all the things are not required here. Destination certificates, so trusted systems. These things are very important in the Java. Day to day, we may have to work on these things here. So operations may stop and starts. Availability and everything. This is the one. This is in SLD, uh, Ravi Garu. Yes. SLD system lo ani system ani landscape lo na systems ani manam configure chhe. Yes. Like, 
yeah Ma uh, just uh, as part of the post configuration just to go to the here just go to the rz70 with web app system go to the rz70 just to maintain the your sld system details here just click on the push the data automatically data will come to the here from here so suppose uh, other systems will pull the data from here suppose like this is your above system this is your java system this is the java development quality and number of systems we have in the road the your landscape you have the n number of systems are there so few systems suppose like suppose like pi system suppose like portal system suppose like some other system it's required the some data from the sld sld also one of the sap technology so so what it will do sld 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 also one of the system data here right so what it will do we have to we have to maintain the all the system details into the one central sld one sld here one sld we have to maintain here all the systems the data which means in rz70 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 we have to push the data all the details will be available here so if anyone if any system wants to data of a technical system details of the system then it will take it from sld then it will take it from the sld here so that is sld is the main heart heart for the other systems actually so all the your landscape related all the technical systems data will be loaded to, to the here so here it's storing the data right yeah it all the components information all the data all the systems data will be located here so other systems will pull pull this data this technical data some other system which require the data from the this system here so it is it will pull it from here then it will so for other other usage purpose they will take it out from the here sap system that's why we need to maintain the other systems data for solution manager suppose we take the solution manager solution manager so suppose like this is a fall man fall man is required the data from the your sld system then it will take the data collect the data from the sld system then it will generate the reports to the it will generate the reports so like that sld is very important here SAP products, these all are the SAP products only, ECC, Java, SLD, so BI Java, so different, different functionalities, it will generate it. So SLD also very important for the Java systems. So suppose like PO system, PO system wants to send the data to the your, so CRM system. This is the ECC system. This is the, in between, we have the PO system, right? So PO. PO, what will do while doing the configuration, it will always check the SLD. If the system is there in the SLD, then it will pull the data from the uh, ECC, then it will pass it to the CRM system. PO, purchase order, sorry, process integration, orchestration, PI PO. So we have to do it uh, uh, while doing yeah. the post installation activities. Only. Yes, yes, yes. This is the RZ70. For Java systems, Java systems, you have to create the destinations. Just to go to the so Java, just to here type the destinations, SLD, right? So then you have to create the SLD data supplier destination. You have to create it. SL data supplier destination. So SLD, each SLD, SLD is the Java. So so that a Java host name, that port number, we have to create it. Give the user, give the user ID and password. Just click on the ping the destination, then it will be successfully it is connected. Then it will push the data to the your SLD system. For Java systems, we have to go to the destination SLD. Above system RZ70. We have to use it to push the data. This is very important. How to push the data from the S above then RZ70? For Java systems, then in the destination, we have to create the one destination is called the data supplier destination. Data supply means it will supply the data to the SLD. This is one of the important activity also. Okay, so in the next class, what I will discuss with you. So we have the main topic actually in the next class is the config tool. That is the very important config tool. Then telnet tool, telnet tool, then some tool. So, applying the patches, telnet and some tool. So, so config tool. Config tool is a, one of the offline tool. 
So here also we can do the all the changes from the Java Java parameter changes, configuration changes, everything we can perform from the config tool. Then telnet tool is for the applying the patches. So there is no JSPM and SDM tools now. So we have the telnet tool. Anything Java patching or applying the patches, we have to use the telnet tool. Otherwise, we have to use the sum tool. So these topics I will discuss with you. Then we have the Java exports and import concept. That is not, not much required, but that is also I will explain it. Okay. So tomorrow's class is quite very important. So don't miss that tomorrow's class. Okay.